All right, I'm going to show you how to install Windows 8 on your computer while still keeping Windows 7, letting you select back and forth between the two. And it's really easy. You can see the whole video takes less than 15 minutes to get all this set up. So the first thing you want to do is create a new partition on your hard drive. So to do this, you just right click on your My Computer and go to Manage. And if you don't have it on your desktop icon uh, like I do, you can find it in the Start menu as well. Right click, Manage. Either way, that will take you to this window and then you want to go to the Storage section. Then Disk Management. And now you see I've already actually made my Windows 8 partition. You can see it named there, Windows 8. Uh, partition G, but uh, I'm still going to show you how to make it, of course. So the first thing you want to do is shrink your C drive. So right click on your C drive and hit shrink volume. And it's going to take a minute here. And then one, this will come up and show you how much you can shrink it by. Um, so you're basically here, you're making room for Windows 8. So I made mine 100 gigabytes, but I have a lot of hard drive space. So you could probably get away with 15 or 20 gigabytes. Uh, since I've already made mine, I'm just going to put in 10 gigs here just to show you, uh, which is 10,000 megabytes. So I'll shrink that. Give us a little heater and make some room for it here. And and there it is. There's my new unallocated space, and I'm going to turn that into a partition by right-clicking on it and hitting a new simple volume. Next, that's the full amount of megabytes selected there. The drive letter. And then uh, you can change the name of it just to make it easy. I'm going to name it something Windows 8 related. And give it a second to format that. Now, if you later on decide you don't want Windows 8 and you want this hard drive space back, it's really easy. And since I already have a Windows 8 partition, I'll go ahead and show you how to do that now. So right click on it, delete the volume. That turns into free space. Now you need to delete the partition. Yes. Now it's unallocated. Now you can go back to the C drive, and this time expand the volume. And uh, that just shows you the full amount there being expanded. Next. And now my C drive is back up to its old size. That partition is gone. Of course, I still have my Windows 8 partition right there. So now you're done with this step. You have a space on your hard drive for Windows 8. Uh, now you need to go download it if you haven't already. So here is the page where you download it. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, there's a couple versions available depending on what developer tools you want and everything. So I'll show you that here in just a second. Uh, there's the URL, but I'll, I'll put a link in the description as well. So there's the download link. Click on Get Started. And here's the different options and the survey. No. So I download the biggest one with, with the, you know, the new version of Visual Studio and everything. But if you don't care that much about all that, you just want to check it out. Uh, depending on your PC, just download the 64-bit or the 32-bit version. And uh, that will take a little while. These are pretty big files. So once you have that, it's an ISO file, which is a disk image. Uh, by default, you can just double click on it and Windows will bring up uh, a little tool to burn it to a DVD. So you can either use that to burn a DVD for the install or I, may, I used my flash drive and made a USB installer drive. So let me see if I can find somewhere in my downloads folder.
All right, there it is. So if you double click, go and then you select your disk drive and put a blank DVD in there and burn the disk. Uh, if you want to do what I did and use your USB flash drive, you need the little uh, Windows USB downloader. I'll I'll put a link in the description, but it's a Microsoft tool. There it is. It says Windows 7, but it works fine for Windows 8 as well. So and here you choose the ISO file. So I'm back in my downloads folder, find the ISO. There it is. Hit next. And then choose what you want to do. And you want to make a USB. And then put in your USB drive and hit next. Now when you do this, it's going to erase everything on your USB drive. So uh, back up any of your files because it's going to it's basically going to format and make it bootable. So I'm going to plug mine in here. Hit refresh. There, there's my flash drive and then you just hit begin copying. And that's where it tells you it's going to erase everything. Now I've already I've already installed Windows 8. So I'm not going to redo it. Plus, you have to sit here and watch the percentages just go up slowly. Uh, but let that go through, and then you're done. You've got your USB uh, flash installer, and restart your computer. Now, if you made the DVD, your computer should automatically be set up to boot first from the disk drive than the hard drive. But if you made a flash drive like I did, it's probably not set up to boot from the flash drive. So you want to go into your BIOS. Uh, for me, it was hitting the delete key. might be different on your computer. Uh, head into your BIOS, and then I don't really remember where the boot order is in this, but uh, give me a second and I'll find it. Everyone's BIOS is going to be a little bit different. So you may have to look um, to find out where your boot order is at. So there's mine. You can see uh, Patriot Memory. That's my USB flash drive. So let's move that up to be the first thing that it tries to boot from. There we go. So now it's going to boot from that first, so it'll boot my Windows 8 installer. So hit F10 to save in my case. Yes. And the computer is going to now reboot. It should boot from your flash drive, and you should see the Windows 8 installer. Uh, flash drive blinking, so it is reading from the flash drive, um, and there you go, loading files. So if you've gotten this far, uh, you've made a successful boot disk for Windows 8. And there we go. Now the rest of this is going to look pretty familiar if you've installed Windows before. Um, it's pretty close to Windows 7, really. So, you know, this screen should look really familiar here. So, choose your language, hit next. Hit install now. Accept your licensing terms, and we're not doing an upgrade. We want to install a brand new copy to our new partition. That way we can still use our version of Windows 7 that we've been using. We don't want to erase that. This is way too early of a build to replace Windows 7. We want to keep both. So there you can see there's my partition that I made with Windows 8. Then install Windows. Now. Again, I've already done this. I've already installed it. Plus, once you hit OK, you know, it takes a good 20 minutes to sit there and extract the files and install them. 
So you would just hit OK here and then just wait for the install to finish. Uh, once the install is finished, uh, your computer will restart. If you made a flash drive like I did, take the flash drive out while the computer is off because it will just try to boot right back into the installer again. And it will just keep doing that until you remove the flash drive. So uh, when it restarts, remove your flash drive and you should be able to then boot up into the developer preview. Now built into the developer preview is a boot selector. So when you boot up, it will say developer preview and you might think, you know, oh no, how do I get back to my Windows 7? But you don't have to worry about it. After that, it will take you to a screen that lets you select either the Windows 8 developer preview or your original version of Windows 7. The very first time you boot into a Windows developer preview, it will sort of skip right past that screen because it wants you to set up the initial settings like uh, entering in your a Windows Live ID, like a Hotmail address. So it will have you and accept some more terms and conditions and show you like when the trial uh, expires. So this won't, you know, this release won't work anymore after March 2012 I think. So maybe that will be the release date or maybe that's when another early version will be released. Um, in either case, your computer now restart. This is going to show up and then I will show you here. It takes a few minutes the first time. Um, and again, it will kind of scoot past the screen that I'm about to show you uh, when you first boot into it. And you can actually see that in another video I made that shows you the initial configuration, but it's, pr it's pretty straightforward. You don't really need to watch a video for it. It will guide you through everything. So give this a couple minutes and I will show you where the boot selector is. And then if you want to boot back into Windows 7, you don't want to use Windows 8 uh, now, you just choose Windows 7. And if you want to try out Windows 8, choose Windows 8. So it's that easy. You know, under 15 minutes, completely configure your com one computer with one hard drive to dual boot and run both Windows 7 and Windows 8. So, and it's free to download. You know, why not try out Windows 8 for free? See what uh, direction Microsoft taking. Oh, we got a little spinning circles. I mean, it's, it's getting somewhere. There we go. This is where you choose. Uh, like I said, you can see there's the developer preview. There's Windows 7. Now if I want to get back into Windows 7 where I just was, where I showed you how to make all this and set it all up, I'd hit Windows 7. If I want to try out the developer preview, hit that. Now like I said, don't be alarmed if it skips past the screen really quickly the very first time you boot into Windows 8. It's just taking you there to configure all your settings. The next time you boot up, you come to the screen and you choose the operating system you want to boot to. That's it.